Brian, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, Jody. I am thrilled to have you in this member spotlight. Um, look, let me just give the audience here just a little bit of quick background on you. Your time in the military and what you've done is it's impressive. So from what I understand, you were an admiral, three-star general, had a huge span of control at one time. I think I saw the number like 60,000. It's commendable. And then so you retired, I think, about 18 months ago. So what was your journey like, Brian, leaving the military, you know, dedicating your life to that? Then all of a sudden you retired. Uh, what, what did that feel like? Yeah, I, um, it took me for a little while to realize it, um, but I was a bit lost. I kind of had lost the sense of my identity, really, um, of who I was. Um, as a little bit more background, you know, I, my, I came from a military family. My father was in the Navy. I went straight into the Navy, if you will, at age 17. And uh, I spent the next 39 years, 35 of it, as a commissioned officer um, in, the, in the Navy. So everything, everything in my life was Navy. Um, my friends were Navy. My, my peer group was Navy. Um, and uh, I rose to a level where there was a lot of it. There was a lot of expectation of me, but a lot of influence that I had over a lot of other people. So my interaction, connection, um, service, uh, all that was all wrapped up in my identity as, uh, you know, the admiral. Uh, and then uh, it was uh, May 7th, 2021. I did my final hand salute to the officer relieving me, and I was relieved of all duties uh, and with no, no future assignment other than go home. And uh, and that was a that was a that was an abrupt transition. And I think a lot of men make that abrupt transition in their own way. Um, but come Monday morning, the phone didn't ring anymore. Um, you know, a month later, no one was calling me, talk, checking in on me. Um, and so uh, I had to I had to grapple with that. The good news was we we transitioned, we moved, we moved down to Louisiana, we got involved in a house renovation. Uh, we were back uh, relocated with where our kids were. So there was a lot of distractions. Uh, and I was getting some part-time work. That's all I was seeking. And, and uh, not really meaningful for me, but it was work. Uh, kind of made me feel connected. And, uh, and there was a lot of distraction for those first 18 months or so. And then a lot of things concluded. Uh, and um, what I didn't realize was I was, um, I was a little bit lost. I didn't know how to articulate it. I did not have a group of men around me. Uh, you know, uh, we moved back down here. We had friends, but I was not engaging. I was not connecting. I was not talking. Uh, I was getting angry at small things. I was getting judgmental. I was comparative. <laughs> you, name all, you name all these traits that you don't want to be, right? And I wasn't, uh, I wasn't light in the heart. I was kind of heavy in the heart. And I, I didn't really know it. And, um, and uh, I discovered it when I met this group. So that's kind of my, my transition from, from working to now. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And it's been, uh, it's and, been and interesting. You know, I wanted to raise my hand every time you were, you know, yeah. you know, uptight or judgmental or whatever it may be. It's just like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's me. That's, it's almost all men. And this concept of transition for men especially, I say for men, that's our focus, but it's a huge deal. Um, especially, I believe the biggest transition for most men is retirement. And, you know, I hear men say, I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to do honeydews and hobbies. And I go, good luck with that. That's great for six weeks. And now what a man needs purpose. He needs passion. He needs people most of the time. And so, all right. So how did you how did you hear about it was it was Josh uh, Curry that approached you about Thumos, right? Yeah, actually it was um it was even a stranger way of coming to Thumos. Um uh, my son who's also a Thumos member um had a had a breakup with his girlfriend and um we were going through that period of time he was a bit lost. Uh, I was trying to be a good dad and and I knew Josh from um from where we work out and Josh has been training me for a while and uh young wise man. And I went to the young wise man and said, I have another young wise man who's hurting. Um, and he said, I've been, I've been there. I've done that. Let me, let me reach out and talk to Eric. 
So he did. Uh, Eric Hat was on the phone with him for 10, 15 minutes, came out. He says, yeah, Josh invited me over for dinner to talk. And he invited me on a men's weekend. And he said, I think I'm going to go. I said, that's great. And he goes, do you want to go? And, you know, old me, who was Mr. No, probably would have said no. But I had a son who was hurting, um, who was obviously um, reinvigorated by a phone call with a friend. Um, a guy who I knew and trusted and had known for about the last 18 months as well. Um, got to know him through fitness and other things. And I said, sure, I'll go. I'll go. Completely to support my son. No idea what a men's weekend with Sumo is. I didn't even know the name of it. Um, in fact, I, I, I learned the name on the way, I think, <laughs> driving, driving to the weekend with so we we got to we got to Texas. So I went to, I went on a weekend. That's how I that's how I learned Sumos. And I went completely blind with with I had no expectations other than I was going to support my son and I was going to help my son uh, in this thing. Um, you know, it was about thirty minutes into the you know we got there, met a bunch of people, went out for Mexican food. It was oh, that was awesome, right? You meet a bunch of guys, you're talking, it's great. Um, get up the next morning, walk around this beautiful place serene, birds, water. Uh, it was awesome. And then we start. Everybody else comes and circle up. And I'm like, what are we doing? Moving the chairs around. And all of a sudden, we start this thing. And it was about 30 minutes into it when it came around my turn. Very simple question. I answered it and fell apart. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it was in the falling apart that I kind of, you know, realized that maybe I need this too, right? Right. Up to that point, it was supporting Eric. But at that point, it was maybe I need this, too. Uh, and, uh, you know, through your quick work, uh, you had Eric and I in a conversation that we had never had sharing things. Um, I healed, he healed in a in a, you know, which felt like forever, but I'm sure it was probably about three minutes. But, you know, it was a uh, and and um, and in that moment, not only did I bond with my son, but I bonded with 20 other men, which has now led to bonding with, you know, a group of 50 and, you know, hopefully someday 500. Bond with my son, but I bonded with 20 other men, which has now led to bonding with, you know, a group of 50 and, you know, hopefully someday 500. So um, that's how I got to Thumos. It was kind of stumbled into it. But I think more men need to be aware and intentionally come to it. So I'm looking forward to August. I'm, I'm impressed, Brian. I mean, you, you were there for whatever reason, in this case, to support your son. And you were only, you only had to be asked once. I had to be asked three times by my boss. Thank God I finally got to yes. But, you know, when I hear you speak these words, right, you, you found healing and, you know, you, you, you found a, a bond and a tribe. It's just like, yeah, that's, that's what we're about that healing piece when you say you broke apart i'm like it's fantastic because now we got so many good strong men with knowledge and care and competency to kind of put you back together and you had everything together seemingly because seeming, a lot of men are just kind of a slow death on the inside and we don't even know it right. and death is a harsh word so you know what i mean there i'm just so glad you're with us man all right with all that said so post weekend you kind of had to integrate back in and i know you're part of our our tribe our inner circle membership what are your thoughts or what do you want your brothers your fellow you know your your friends out there to know like what are your thoughts on the brotherhood the tribe you know being part of a connected community that cares yeah it's uh it's something that i i think when men open their their eyes and their hearts right when they let go of the thinking and they and they and they they feel more they realize that there is you know they're not on a on a journey alone and there are other people who are out there that can support you and carry you in the dark times and when you're up you can carry them through the dark times um, I've found this to be a, uh, an, it, it's an interesting adventure, right? Every, every other tribe, if you will, that I've been in has been something that's been associated with a school or, a, or a career or, you know, those kind of things. Um, this is a really broad set of people, um, that, that are in this community, usually connected from friends to friends, 
maybe it started out at a, at a common nexus, but many of us have nothing in common other than this. And in reality, it's almost my most trusted group of friends. And it's a, it's a strange thing to say that there are, there are people in the network that I have not ever met in person. Um, I may be only seen over the, over the uh, uh, video uh, uh, calls that we have during the week, on occasion reached out and talked to on the phone, but I feel like I know them. You, you know, I feel like a connection um, that would have never happened otherwise. And so, um, you know, these men with the common purpose um, that focus on being better humans in their community are making me a better human in my own community. And I think one of the, you know, the most important things that I've taken away from this um, is this idea of having your own personal mission and purpose and thinking and being intentional with it. Um, and that's the thing that's helped me. And as I have participated, connected uh, with the brothers, talked to people, uh, in the group, it's helped me shape that, that mission and I'm on it, you know, and, and now I'm not sitting at home wondering who I am and what my purpose in life is. I'm, I'm engaging with my community. Um, I'm, I'm working in nonprofit space. I'm doing jobs that I think have purpose, not just to do them, but because I think they have purpose and I'm spending lots of time with my you know, with my wife and my family, and I'm concentrated on fitness and all the things that make us better citizens. And I'm grateful, which I think is the most important thing, because I'm not sure I was grateful six months ago when I started this. That's awesome. Brian, you, you just remind me of, you know, I, I believe every man needs a purpose, passion, and a path. And it's so clear to me that you have all of that right now at this moment. And I'm sure it'll evolve, it'll change, it'll improve, it'll get better. And so when you, you match those three P's up with the other two things that, you, that we have, both you and I have in, in big doses, gratitude and connection, a connected community. It's we're happy, productive men who are hopefully making a difference outside of Thumos and in our communities. Brian, you add a ton of value. Thanks for what you do inside of Thumos, in our community of St. Tammany. Um, external. Thanks for everything you do externally. So I appreciate you, man. And thanks for coming on today. No, thank you, Jody. And thank you for taking a chance and leading this group of men. Um, and uh, I love it that you're a servant leader because you can be led as well. Uh, you serve us, but you can also be led. And, uh, and I love that you're real. And, that, and that's every man in this group is, is real. Um, they don't come to this with any false sense of things. They, they're they real. And uh, that's what I think most men need. Raw and real. Thanks, Brian. Have a great yeah. day. All right. All right. Thank you.